What time is it, my creatives? That's right, it's photo hacking time, and it's Charlotte Salcedo, your host, and today I'm going to be reviewing Suitcase Fusion 9. Now, every graphic designer or designer needs to have a type manager in their little graphic pocket, you know, their little left-hand pocket, or wherever you, wherever your design pocket is. I mean, that's what I call it. I call it my back pocket. But anyways, I digress. So I want to get into this. Now, Suitcase Fusion has kindly given me this software. I've decided to review it. I hadn't found any other reviews of Suitcase Fusion 9. It's a totally overlooked program, and we're going to go jump in it. Now, the only other video I could find was actually from Suitcase Fusion. It was not, it didn't match up with everything that it had. I don't know if it was an old update or what, but we're going to go through this and you're going to see how easy it is to use Suitcase Fusion 9 and it's definitely highly recommendable. It is the only type manager that I have been able to find that meets all my needs. Now, one quick thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, had a little glitch in my throat there. I had to get a drink of water. One, one quick thing about this. Now, I initially had problems with Windows 10, okay? Windows 10 seems to be pretty glitchy in the PC, so I kind of upgraded to Windows 10 Pro before this, uh, so everything st seems to be working more smoothly. And I also installed a solid state uh, drive, an extra drive, into my computer to make it run a little bit faster <clears throat> as well. So, if you have 11,000 fonts like I do, I highly recommend updating your Windows 10 to Windows 10 Pro. If you're on a Mac, you're good, you know. If you have a regular drive, I recommend upgrading to a solid state drive. Now, what I found was the easiest is basically taking all of your fonts from the font uh, manager in uh, Windows 10 and I'm going to show you that here. So we'll go to we'll go to the control panel here. This is where you will find all of your fonts if you're a newbie. And sorry, I have two screens so I have to pull it over here. Uh, so you're going to go over here to appearance and personalization and fonts. And this is where you're going to find all your fonts in here. Now, what I did was I took all of my fonts out of here that were not computer fonts and you'll see some of these are activated in here <clears throat> that's because I've been playing around with font manager but initially I took all my fonts out of here I had 11,000 fonts and it took me like two or three days and I organized them into folders as you can see here and then I dragged those folders into suitcase fusion now I found that to be the easiest method of all and, and the reason why that is, is because Suitcase Fusion will organize your, your fonts into folders. Um, they'll organize them into what they think their version of, of the font should be. Um, for example, um, it's basically the technical, te technical type character uh, for that. Um, let me basically the foundries that's the word I was looking for I can't think today I don't know why but um yes so it will it will organize it into weird boundaries probably things that you probably won't remember so I just made folders for all of my fonts how I would remember them and I think that's the easiest way so uh, basically I'm going to show you something really quickly here so you can just make a folder here, put fonts, okay? And then inside this, you would make individual folders and then you would take all your fonts and then just drag and drop them in there. It, 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 was, should, it should take some time, but that's what I did. And then once you have all your, your folders, your individual folders, you know, organized, you're gonna save them on an external hard drive. I have mine saved on a, I think it's like a five terabyte external hard drive. And the reason why that is, is because 
you don't want your fonts to be sitting into your desktop, there's a lot of reasons why. When you download free fonts off the internet or you download fonts from people off the creative market who think they can create fonts but they really suck at it and it ends up corrupting your files and you can't open. Um, I had one time I couldn't open, um, what is it? Adobe Premiere Pro. I couldn't, it, the, it was giving me all kinds of errors and after effects. So when you have your, your computer fonts in here, you want to have just your, your basic computer fonts. Now you can reset once you take all of your fonts out of here, you can put all of the default fonts back in here by just doing a Google search for default fonts and then you can just drag and drop them back in here. And so your computer will run a lot faster because it's not having to load all those fonts with each program. You'll notice that when I, after I did this, my Photoshop loaded like so freaking quickly, it wasn't even funny. It was, it was insane. Like it loaded in like three seconds. So that's, that's one thing. <clears throat> Another thing is when you're working, you know, on graphic files and stuff like that, all those fonts like really bog down your Photoshop, your Illustrator. If you've been having problems with Illustrator or Photoshop or Adobe Premiere Pro not really working correctly, that could have an effect on it. So yeah, another cool feature in Windows 10 is that you can um, create shortcuts from your file and I'm going to show you how to do that. One second here. So while doing um, all of this creative stuff, I stumbled on how to install fonts as shortcuts to save space in Windows 10. And I'm going to leave a link in the description below on how to do this. And this is pretty cool and you can read into why uh, this is necessary and um, why you should do it and how you could do it. Um, so this is basically another safe spacing, uh, another safe, um, save space. Oh my God, I can't talk. You know what I'm talking about. Um, space saving tip that you can do as well. Okay, if, if I could only talk, then we can get through this. <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, somebody told me that I should edit my videos to sound more professional. Well, here's what I have to say about that. I make mistakes and I let my viewers know that I make mistakes because people make mistakes and that's how you learn. And you're never gonna get better at anything if you don't make mistakes. You need to be able to make mistakes to be successful at anything. That's my, my secret and my tip to you. So don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to mess up. Play with this and, and get a feel for it because sometimes I spend a few days, you know, getting to know um, a program or, or getting to know something. I've been playing with Photoshop for years, okay? Years, and I still haven't reached 100% capacity. So that, that just lets you know right there. And um, one thing, another tip, I learned from Bob Ross last night. I was watching Bob Ross, of course, and um, he said something that he wasn't really good at drawing um, portraits because he was, he was drawing like a campfire. He was painting out a campfire, and he said something... Well, his, his little cowboy that he was trying to draw into the campfire, it like really sucked. <laughs> and he said that, you know, his friend, he spent some time doing portraits with his friend and um, his friend told him, you know, to just go back to drawing trees. And he said, you know what a talent is? A talent is just something that you do that, basically what he said, let me, let me try to remember. He said a talent is only developed by something that you're interested in. So basically, you find something that you're interested in and you spend more time in it and then it becomes a talent. So people aren't just like born like, oh, they can just draw like right off the bat. It's because they like doing it and they continue to do it. Um, do you think that I was ever that good in Photoshop? No, I sucked at it at first. I was horrible. I was probably one of the worst students in my college class, um, but I kept going. You know, you gotta keep, you gotta keep trucking. So you gotta keep trying. You can't give up. You gotta, you gotta 
you got to try hard. If you want to do it and you want to be good at something, you got to keep at it. That's um, Bob Ross's tip, I guess. He also said that he liked to play with fire as a kid and he got in trouble for it, so I thought that was kind of funny too. Bob, Bob Ross cracks me up. I love him. But anyways, I digress. So, um, okay, so we take the folders, okay? These are saved on an external hard drive, you can see here. You can see that this was originally in font base, and I gave up on font base because it was a little buggy, and it didn't really have all the things that I needed. But I'm going to show you the best part about Suitcase Fusion and why it's so freaking worth it, okay? All right. <clears throat> so once you have everything in here, it's going to take a while to save. This, the only thing I don't like about this program, it's not very counterintuitive. It like, doesn't tell you what's going on. So if you're going to drag all your fonts in here, I dragged a few folders at a time. And then it will pop up here after a while. It doesn't really let you know that anything is being done. But it is being done. Just know that like at the very bottom it's going to say halfway through percentages getting done. Okay? Alright. So this program is very um, simple. There's only about three panes that you have to deal with. This is going to be where all your fonts are, of course. Alright? Your system fonts. Um, this is going to be your program fonts. You can see this is a new product I'm working on. It will save all your templates in here from your fonts that you've been using. So, like, say for instance you have a file. I'm going to show you one from Photoshop. You're using these fonts. It will remember to save those fonts so you won't get that annoying pop-up. Oh, do you want to save these? Do you want to look for these fonts in Type Manager? It's so freaking annoying. But with, um, <clears throat> with Suitcase Fusion, it remembers all of that for you. So anytime you save a document, you pull it back up, this Suitcase Fusion will remember all the fonts that you ever use. So that is amazing. And um, so yeah, so I have all of these saved in here. You've got your third-party fonts, Typekit, Google Fonts, and Sky Fonts. I don't know what the hell Sky Fonts are, but it sounds cool. You can probably Google that and look that up. I didn't really get into that. I, I think sky fonts are probably cloud fonts, um, something that you would have to pay to store or something. I didn't really want to get into that. So, um, <clears throat> I have my fonts stored on an external hard drive. That's where I feel safe with them. So, you know. And then um, this is all your documents that you have. You have those fonts in. You have your system fonts here. You can't delete these fonts. You can't. You know mess with them you can see they're locked the system fonts are locked and they're already active so <clears throat> and then you can do smart searches you can find duplicate fonts favorite fonts problem fonts recently added fonts activated fonts and auto activated fonts now how you activate a font I'm just gonna go in here to 3d if you want to activate this you're just gonna click on this and it will activate it but you don't want to activate it uh, permanently. You can um, select the temporary. Okay, so you have to actually click on this thing right here. And then you're going to uncheck permanent. Well, uncheck permanent from here. And then click on temporary. And then you can activate that temporarily. Permanent, if you activate, activate it permanently, it will end up in your, your um, in the control panel, in your appearance and fonts and personalizations. You don't want it in there because that's going to slow your programs down. And if that, pro if that font's not compatible with programs, it will cause them not to load, which was an issue for me. Or it will cause issues with, with your programs. Some of those free fonts, they're really, they're really fucked up. I'm just going to say it like I stopped downloading free fonts a while ago because um, they fucked up my system. I'm just going to be honest with you. Be careful when you're downloading free fonts because you don't know what's going on with those fonts. Some of them are corrupted and may corrupt your system too. I get all my fonts off Creative Market. I'll leave the link down below too so you can, you can see that. <clears throat> so you can create a new library 
You can create a new set, a new smart search. I personally don't like to create new libraries from here. I like to create my folders on the desktop, you know, make my, my folder and then drag it to wherever I need to in here or have my folder and then go in there and drag my fonts in there. Um, you can edit attributes. This is something that um, I don't do either, but if you click on the font, you can find the glyphs and see all the glyphs here. Now, I like I like this glyph section here. This is very useful, not like the one in font base, it, which totally sucked. Um, yeah, so there's that. Another cool thing about this program is that you can look at the info and it will tell you all the information about this, this font and any information that you might need. So that is super cool. Now let's hop into Photoshop because I want to show you some cool things. So this is a wedding invitation that I created. Um, I got these uh, cool watercolor things off of Creative Market. I'll leave a link down in the description below so you can, um, if you're interested in getting any type of the stuff that I got off of here. This font I also got from Creative Market. <laughs> um, and I'm going to show you a cool thing that you can do. Let's say, for instance, that you didn't like this text, okay? You don't have to go back to Font Base to look for a font. You can go into here into the plugins, Windows, Extension. And go to extensis and this will pull up your font manager into here you just click on the little plus sign you find your font li library and then you push down the little arrow and then you're gonna look for what okay so these this is like a a signature font so I'm gonna go all the way down to signature and now it's oh I checked this little box and it's open the area so I can see these fonts. I can go in here and if I want to use Crystal Sky, okay, so I'm not allowed to use that font. Let's see. So make sure you select your text that you're on the layer of the text that you have it selected. And if you want to change it, you just double click on any font that you want to use. Okay. And I like the original that I use, so I'm going to go back to that. So it's as simple as that. That's pretty cool. And I'm not really sure why I got that error message um, in there. It, I guess. I have the font already, like a similar font already selected. Maybe it's a duplicate. Um, I haven't cleaned out my duplicates yet. So that's another cool thing about this. You can go in here and you can find your duplicate fonts. They'll be here and you can go in here and decide if you want to delete some duplicates. Um, I haven't done that yet. So I don't think I'm going to do it either because I'm afraid that I'm going to mess up something and um, that's just that. So there's a few different ways that you can view these fonts. You can you can favorite them. They'll show up in your favorites. Um, these are like if you click on these little arrows here you can look at them as tile. You can look at them in different ways. I like the waterfall selection the best and if you want to view all these fonts you just click the arrows down the only thing I don't like about this is that I wish there was a way that you could just automatically have all these drop down arrows open up by itself, but I haven't been able to find a way to do that yet. You can also change the text here. Hello, pretty woman. How are you? And you can see how it would look. Like if you're doing a wedding in invitation, you can say wedding invitation. You can see how it looks. This is like in my Western um, section here. You can see how it would all look. Now, um, you can go in here into your preferences. 
um, and set your plugins. Make sure that they're all updated. And usually, if this is installed right, it will already have everything updated. You won't have to do any of that. But like I said, when I initially installed this program, I had issues with Windows 10. With the new release of Windows 10, I think everybody had issues with Windows 10. So I don't think it had anything to do with Suitcase Fusion. I'm going to let you know that this, this plugin works with all Adobe products. The Suitcase Fusion 9 was made to work with Adobe Creative Cloud. So I'm using the latest version of Adobe Creative Cloud. So this is the only Windows font manager that works for the PC that does this that I know of. So if you're looking for a font manager, this is definitely um, the one that y you should want to be using. So I hope that I answered all of your questions. I hope that, um, that you were able to understand my tutorial or basically review of this product. I, I hope that this helps you to get this. Um, I definitely am using this and loving it. I'm loving it. I didn't, I didn't love font base so much. It's simple, but it's very buggy. Sometimes the, the fonts wouldn't load. Oh yeah, that's one thing I have to show you that, um, how to activate a font, how quickly this is. So let me show you that really quickly before we go. I'm going to show you my cool mermaid fonts that I found. Story tales. I love this font. It's really pretty. Um, these fonts here, they reminded me of, of mermaids. So this is actually called mermaid. So I'm going to activate this font and we're going to look for mermaid typeface regular in Photoshop. So we're going to go back to Photoshop and we're going to look for Or you can look for it in, um, one second. Okay, so we're going to go back to the font library, click on it, and then look for mermaid. And you'll see all of the mermaid fonts here. Now the good part about this is, is that if you come in here, you can see all the fonts in here without having to do the little arrow click down thing. So there's the mermaid typeface, and there it goes. It's also showing up here in the font manager. So let's see. There. there it is. So it shows up very quickly. Now with font base, it, it took a while for it to show up or it didn't show up at all, so it's pretty buggy. So you can see that this program is the bomb. And my Photoshop runs so fast and, and so good. So um yeah, so I hope that you love this tutorial, and um, if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up, ring that bell, and um, subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, guys.